Hi, so welcome back to Real Auto Reports right here for another Real First Impressions video edition, this time on the 2015 Kia K900. Yes, this is their foray into the Uber luxury market, and that is what we're here to give you our first impressions about. I'm Jonathan McGrew, so uh, let's jump in the driver's seat here and do our walk around. Since it's windy, we'll do it right here from the driver's seat and give you the pictures and the commentary you're looking for for the real first impressions on this all new luxury vehicle for the Kia brand. So let's take a look. All right, so here we are in the 2015 Kia K900. And when we do our walk around, well, because it is snowy, as you can see outside still here in Colorado, cold and a bit windy today in blustery gusts. You know, our flag is still right now, but the minute we get out of the car, it's amazing how those gusts come up and really do affect the sound. So we wanted to give you the best review possible. So we'll show you the front clip here and we'll talk about it as we look at the different photos of the vehicle. Now, the first thing I noticed when I came up on the K900 was the front headlight assembly. With the running lights, you're gonna have these really neat outlined LED pipe lighting, just like we saw on the Kia Cadenza that we tested earlier this year. And, you know, what's interesting about that is that when we had the Kia Cadenza, we, re we had the Jag XJ all-wheel drive right after that or right around that time period. And now we have this K900, and it would have been neat to drive this K900 back-to-back -back with the Jag because even when we drove the Cadenza, we noticed that the looks and the quality and the luxury coming from these Kias is so much better than it was five or even ten years ago. But really, even in the last three years, we've seen such an improvement in the Kia brand, in the models, in the refreshes. The new Optima is out, and it is looking fantastic from the foes. We can't wait to test it. And when you look at the front of this vehicle, you have the signature Kia grille. You're going to see that continue across the Kia line. Now, the headlights, you have these really neat kind of four jeweled headlights uh, in this quad headlight setup. And I think that's interesting because they've got the four little jewels within the HD headlights there. And it is neat and they are adaptive and they will follow your track as you're driving along. So that's something interesting. Also notice the uh, LEDs along the bottom in the fog light housings and all of that. And it's just a great looking vehicle from the front. It's got that stately presence, that kind of luxury car persona that you would expect from a vehicle trying to compete with the 7 Series, the S-Class, and, and even its own family brands in the Genesis and, and even up to the Equus to some degree in the Hyundai brand. So this is a vehicle that uh, is going to be packed with luxury features. Now, as we move around the side, what you're going to see is a very large sedan. Think of this as almost an extended wheelbase kind of design. It's got a large back seat with good room, especially for people who are six foot in or more that are driving or riding in the front seats, there is still really good leg room in the back seat. And we'll get to the finish and fit of the interior in a little bit here. But look down the side of the vehicle, you're going to notice that it's got some flaring in the rear at the haunches. So it gives it a bit of a, you know, active persona, more like a BMW, less like maybe uh, some of the uh, other cars out on the market like the higher end Impalas and things like this. I think this car has a little bit more uh, curvaceousness to it and a little bit more personality. I think it is a nice looking vehicle and the large chrome wheels there give it quite the impression. And now the thing is, is that this is a rear wheel drive setup and they're only offering the wheel, rear wheel drive right now. We expect that you might see an all wheel drive version coming down the road a piece, but for now, and especially in the snow with these big tires and rims, you're definitely going to want to think about that from a first impressions perspective about where you live and whether you need a second set of rims and tires to handle snow tires for all your driving, especially when we've just had several inches here in Colorado, which is kind of weird with the sunny weather today, but it has been below freezing and uh, it's been very cold and snowy. So 
when I look down the side of the vehicle, it's nice to things, see things like the touch entry. It does notice that the key is in your pocket and it'll unlock the doors and the mirrors and, th and you know, unfold the mirrors and things like that and give you that illuminated entry. It's just that you're not going to see the seamless touch that you do on things like the BMWs where all you have to do is rest your hand on it. This still has a button you have to press. And I think of that as a kind of older generation keyless entry uh, with the smart keys in these vehicles. So it's not necessarily a negative. It's just something to note in the vehicle. Now, as we move around to the back, you're going to notice that from the rear this really does have that kind of LS460 kind of design highly integrated tail lights it's a very round design that is uh, I guess the only way to put it is, is it's kind of slabbed and bulbous back there rounded off it, it definitely has some sculpting to it but it is meant to be a kind of squared off trunk design where you can get a lot of luggage in the trunk it does have good cargo rooms and you're going to cargo room in the trunk but you're going to find that it also has nice detail in the trunk that you would expect from a luxury line where the like the chrome tie downs in the trunk floor heavily padded trunk floor one of the things you will notice about this vehicle is it does have good options as well as noise control so that you feel like you're riding in a luxury vehicle and the trunk's no different it feels well outfitted and you have the power power up and power pull down on the trunk which is also a nice feature and we like that a lot it, it really does speak to the luxury class that the k900 is trying to fit into all right, so coming on into the inside of the vehicle here, what you're going to notice is that this is a well-appointed vehicle. It has a lot of niceties like the wood on the steering wheel here and throughout the interior. Multi-tone in this vehicle. There's piping here on the seats that give the seats a two-tone nature. Of course, in this kind of cream color with the darker uh, black piping along it. You have the soft touch on the dash with the two-tone doors in the wood integrated. Lots of seat controls, heated and cooled front seat, heated and cooled rear seat. Very nice appointments in this vehicle. As we pan across the dash, what you're going to notice is the steering wheel has a lot of controls including adaptive cruise and your lane departure system and your voice recognition. All of that you can control from the wheel. You've got your navigation system and your entertainment display in the center stack with your controls for the HVAC that then display up into the navigation area or up into the uh, heads the display here in the dash and you control all of it from the dial here in the console even though I can reach the screen it took me a minute to realize that this is not a touch screen you can't touch it and I guess from previous Kia experiences that's kind of what I was expecting uh, also just from you know the the type of uh screens that you see and how far away they are or how close they are based on whether you can scroll to them. A BMW you really can't reach the screen so you know you have to do everything from the dial. This one you, it t took me a minute to realize I can't touch the stuff that looks like I should be able to touch it right here on the screen. So you do use the, di the dial here and uh, you know it's a nice setup. It has a lot of neat features. There's a camera feature for the surround view monitor. That's a nice feature that we're seeing come to uh, you know all of these vehicles. Like if I put it into a reverse here, you're going to see the camera come up and you have your full round view monitor. We used to only see that back in the day in the Infinities. So that is a pretty, and the Land Rovers, of course, uh, they also were a pioneer in that area. So this is really a neat system. Uh, and it's a nice piece of technology that you would expect in your luxury vehicle. Now, uh, the other thing that's kind of neat about the interior is the amount of room. The rear seat room is really good. The front room is really good. Memory seats on both driver and passenger side. Lovely suede-like headliner. It, I, I'm going to guess it's really synthetic just by the way it feels. But it's got that nice kind of look to it that makes it look very luxurious. And it's in a nice light gray which complements this cream interior. Now, we could talk all day about the features in the car, but it has pretty much everything you could want, including the panoramic sunroof here that'll open, lift up, and slide back. It is a nice 
set of appointments in the vehicle. And well, really what's left is to jump out and talk about what's under the hood and drive it for a little bit to give you that first driving impression. So let's take a look under the hood. All right, so under the hood, what you're gonna find is the V8 engine from Kia. And this engine is really going to have some niceties with it. It's a five liter gas direct injected V8 engine. It's mated to an eight speed automatic transmission, which is quite nice. It is keeping up with the class and the competitors. And you've got this very BMW like shift mechanism here where you pull the trigger and you pull back to shift into driver, you push forward to go into reverse and you have the park button very much in line with a lot of the german designs and if you've been following kia over the years they did hire one of the uh, leading design people away from the german car companies so that this kia brand has started to get that kind of german sensibility to it from a design perspective whereas i feel like the hyundai's really feel a lot more japanese in their kind of design influence or or at least in that asian kind of design as opposed to the european design and I think it really sets the two brands apart considering that they have so much in common and they are so close business sense wise. And uh, for a long time that even the technology found in both cars, you, you could definitely tell they were related uh, in, in especially in technology and geography. Now, what's neat about this vehicle is that it's 420 horsepower and it is mating that to that eight speed automatic transmission to get about a 5.50 to 60. That's pretty cool. Now the fuel economy is not as good as I would like to see it, but it's right in line with things that have this kind of horsepower and this kind of size, even like our charger all wheel drive that we've been doing long-term testing on our 2013. So it's gonna see zero to 60 in, in a similar time frame. It's a little bit slower than the charger all wheel drive RT we have even though it has more horsepower at 420 than the Charger's 370. But its mileage is going to be very similar. 15 in town, 23 out on the highway, and an 18 mile uh, per gallon combined. And we're seeing really with the snow that we've been seeing and the kind of driving we've been having to do over the last uh, little bit, we've not quite yet seen that. So we're going to do the long-term test and see how much better the fuel economy gets because I can tell you in the snow in the first impressions as it started to snow when we took delivery of the car that the miles per gallon are going to be really low because of the low speeds. So we won't taint your opinion there but it's a nice engine. It sounds good. It's got a nice uh, roar to it when you really get on it and it does definitely sit you back in your seat. Now let's go out and take a little bit of a drive in this vehicle and uh, we'll give you our first driving impressions and then we'll come back for the real wrap up. All right, so here we are for our first impressions driving experience hitting the road. And the first thing I'm gonna say is that the traction control, given that we took delivery of this vehicle from the press fleet when it was uh, snowing, coming down pretty good, there was already snow on the ground, uh, it is a vehicle that I noticed the traction control systems really do, um, they, they are, are pretty invasive in, in the operation of the vehicle. So we have a little bit of a lift coming out of our driveway here and I'm just easing into the throttle and the traction light is flashing and see the car's sliding a little bit there and the traction control is, is working pretty hard to get us going. And that's a good thing when the snowpack is deeper or it is more ice than it is actual snowpack that we have here that's been packed down on our more country like roads out here at Real Auto Ranch. What you're going to find is that it really struggles to get going as a vehicle. It, it, it has a lot of trouble getting some sense of motion and sometimes I find you actually have to turn the traction control and the stability control off so that you can modulate the accelerator and, the, and, and all of that to get going. One of the interesting things about driving this vehicle from a first impressions perspective is that the steering is lovely. I actually quite like it just jumping in and getting behind the wheel. It feels like a luxury car. It has 
soft steering, you know, in terms of ease, but you feel like it is crisp and it has a good center feel and that when you point the car where you want it to go, it is really doing what you want. Now, what is interesting about that is that uh, the car is uh, very powerful. And so from a first impressions perspective, what I notice is that the throttle sensitivity is, uh, is interesting in that it is very sensitive. So you get going quickly when you get on the throttle in this car. And sometimes it's surprisingly so, especially in this winter kind of climate. I notice that you can engage that traction control very easily if you get into the throttle too deep too quickly. All right, so to wrap up this Real First Impressions video, what we have here is a very large four-door luxury sedan from Kia. It's their all-new K900 for 2015, and it's going to come in right about as tested anyway. The MSRP on this vehicle is about $66,400, and that includes a pretty impressive list of options, including the dual memory seats, the heated and cooled front seats, the perforated leather, the two-tone interior with the cream leather with perforated you know seat surfaces both front and rear you have reclining rear seats with heated and cooled functions a center console on the back that would make some limousines blush and it definitely has some neat and cool features like the rear and front panoramic roof here that is not really separated by anything than a structural piece where the glass mounts it doesn't even have a full bar structure keeping the two apart. It is a vehicle that has 420 horsepower coming from a 5 liter V8 engine with fuel economy ranging right in the teens to the low 20s out on the highway. So 15 city and 23 highway with an 18 mile per gallon combined. It is a nice vehicle with some bling with the big chrome rims that you see on our test vehicle. And it has a sense that Kia has really come into the luxury market. Now, what will we think over the long term? Well, you'll have to come back for the real video, the real review right here at Real Auto Reports with me, Jonathan McGrew. So until then, we invite you to watch more videos on our YouTube channel, leave us some comments on our Facebook page, and stay tuned for some new video features, including Real Auto Talk, where we talk about cars just because we love them. So we'll be looking for your topics on our Facebook, and stay tuned for that. And until then, we'll see you down the road.